myself, I started thinking 1.2 billion Muslims. Shaitan is good, but he's not that good. <laughs> to deceive 1.2 billion people. About five years ago, I had the privilege and the honor of meeting a Muslim person. And I noticed that person because of the personality, always happy, always bubbly, always friendly. This attracted me to that person. So we started talking, the person told me uh, uh, that it was Muslim, she was Muslim, it was a lady, she was Muslim and everything and all of that. Really, I've heard of Muslim, I've heard of them. You have a religion Islam, huh? yeah? Yeah, I've heard of it. I have no intentions of becoming Muslim. By the time I was 20 years of age, I had my own congregation that I had to pastor or take care of. So as you can see, I was very much entrenched into the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, especially knowing that they were different from the world. But see, the world looked at them anytime, especially Western society, anytime you're different, they look at them as extremists, fanatics, fundamentalists, Sounds familiar, huh? I started gaining a very accurate knowledge of the Bible which is kind of an irony because anyone that's familiar with the scriptures knows uh, of the, the book of the people, knows that, um, that in reality has been polluted so much throughout history. It has been contaminated and polluted so much. But, you know, I've always been of the kind that have felt that in its pure form, even with the Jews, the Torah was given to them, in its pure form, until it was moved around and polluted, it was from God. The Injil, the same thing. The Gospel, when it was given to, uh, to Jesus at the beginning, before the pollution, before the contamination, was good and sound. So after a lot of consideration in prayer and a lot of heartache, I left. 1979, I left the religion and I, I didn't go back. Well then what happened is, I could no longer go to any other religion. Because as a Jehovah's Witness, I was taught that all religions were bad, except Jehovah's Witness. Only Jehovah's Witness gained the approval of God. Everybody else is wrong. So you see, with a clear conscience, I could not go to other religions. And then as a Jehovah's Witness, I no longer believed in their teachings. So I was like a man without a religion. Fortunately, I was not a man without a God. I even went back to the Catholic Church. I said I was born a Catholic and I've been a Jehovah's Witness all my life, so I'm going to go back to the Catholic Church. Maybe I missed something. Okay? So I went back to the Catholic Church for about three months every day. Sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. You know, I go to all of their masses. It wasn't working. It wasn't working because it didn't appeal here and it didn't appeal here. And I said, I'm going to learn how to be a Christian, a good Christian, not Jehovah's Witness way, but how God wants me to be a Christian. So I began to study the Bible very, very uh, closely at night and, and many hours and in prayer. I read all of the New Testament. I thought I had it all lined up. Then I started on the Old Testament, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Exodus. When I got to the prophets, something happened. When I got to reading in the Bible about the prophets, all of a sudden, I wanted to rest my eyes and I started thinking about that person that told me about Islam, about being a Muslim, about a Quran, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So I said, okay, I am open-minded now. I don't think like a Jehovah's Witness. I'm going to find out if these people are liars, if they are no good or whatever. I'm going to find out for myself. I started thinking 1.2 billion Muslims. Shaitan is good, but he's not that good. To deceive 1.2 billion people. So I'll look at this, this Quran and I'll see what it is. I started reading the Quran. I read it completely all the way through the first time. It was unbelievable. Everything started to fall in place. Everything made sense. I took the Quran and now I could say to my Bible, I know now it all works together. Now I understand. Because of the Quran, I was able to understand my Bible. And I say, oh, this is great. God is making me a good Christian. He's going to teach me through the Quran. Well, as I kept reading and kept reading, I kept reading the Quran more because it made more sense, it was easier, it was simpler. It appealed more to my heart, to my intellect, to my mind. And my Bible, as much as I know that at one time it was a holy wo uh, word of God, now in its polluted state, I started to put it down more. And I started to read the Quran. I went to the mosque and I had an upset stomach. It's like when you're wanting, you know you got to do something, but you don't want to do it, you know, you know. And so I wanted to, but I kind of had an uneasiness, oh, an upset stomach and everything. So I said, well, I'm going to drive around and see if I find a parking space. I drive around several times, no parking spaces around the, the masjid. Finally, I said, that's it. I'm going to go one more time. If I don't find a parking space, I'll go home. That was my excuse. As I was making the turn, Right in front of the mosque, a car pulled out. You are making it very hard for me. So I pull in, okay? Now I am more nervous because I am going to have to face these people. I'm going to have to go. I don't know nothing about Islam. I don't know nothing about Muslim. So I'm nervous. I'm going to go for the first time. I walk up to the door. There is this big brother, Arab descent, big beard, standing like this. I walk up, he says, go around. Okay, I go around. I get to the other side, there's the brothers all beginning to bow and do their prayers. They're looking at me, I say, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just watching, you know, I'm just looking. Like when you shop, I'm just looking, thank you, I'm just looking. Finally, it was all over. They finished the prayer and everything. They all started to go into the mosque and, and mingle. So I went into the mosque and I started to mingle. And these brothers all kept saying, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. I don't know what it means. I don't know what they're saying. But this is the way it happened. Finally, a brother took me. He saw I was kind of a little confused. He grabbed me by the hand and he took me and he says, uh, you're new, right? I said, well, yes, this is my first time. Come on, I show you around. Takes me everywhere, takes me to the, to the men's room, shows me the different places. This is where you do voodoo? Voodoo, what's that? It's not voodoo. No, it's voodoo. Okay, it's voodoo. How do you do this? And you wash before you pray and this and that and whatever. Very nice brother. His name is Omar. Allah sent him to me. Okay? Now, the plot thickens because I'm impressed. I like what I see. Now I go home. I'm very happy. Now I decide... I want to pray like them. I, they do prayer. When I was Christian, I just pray. Just kneel my head and I pray. But something appealed to me. When these people get down on their knees and start to bow and prostrate themselves before the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe. Now you see how the religion works. You see how our religion is so much simpler. How it's so beautiful. How it appeals to the intellect and mind. I do not feel embarrassed. It appealed to me. This made sense to me. This is the God, the creator of the universe. Shouldn't I bow down to him? Am I so arrogant? A little piece of clay? I realize now that it was all in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning for me. I, I, I didn't know it at that time. But what I wasn't aware then, that I am aware of now, is that when I was 120 days in the womb of my mother, the angels came and they had already planned where I was going to be, what I was going to do, and that I was going to be here on this day speaking to you, alhamdulillah.